Welcome to the jungle! Hey everyone, it's Ira, and I'm very excited to announce this brand new series of Vintage Story. Now, as you will note in the upper left-hand corner, I just updated, like, yesterday, and there's already another update. That, that developer sure does play fast and loose with the definition of stable, I'm telling you folks. I'm not gonna update this one uh, for now because it doesn't have anything significant and uh, I'll, I'll wait until there's a more significant update. I'm sure more will be coming soon. In any case, by the time you see this, it'll probably be like 1.12.17 or something. Um, here we are. I am ready to start my new challenge series. This is the new version of Vintage Story, the 1.12 update, which is massive. Folks, I've been playing around with this in, uh, in uh, just a single-player, non-recorded world, just to see how feasible this challenge is, and I'm having a blast. I think I'm more impressed with this update than I have been with any other, and maybe ever? And that's really saying something. So before we go in, I did want to show everyone the settings that I'm using for this world. So, um, I haven't changed anything here. It is very hot, it's the second, second hottest, and super humid, that is the most humid. I turned microbox chiseling on, I don't know why you wouldn't, I think that's very fun. Um, I am turning on drop inventory contents when you die though, so that's important. Um, I am giving myself the maximum amount of time before monsters appear because my first uh, worry is going to be food, not fighting. Um, putting the monsters on passive and making them a bit weaker but not as weak as I did before. Giving myself 30 HP, you know what, I'll give myself 25 HP, it'll be a little more fair, a little more reasonable. Um, I have reduced the hunger rate a little bit. However, I am going to be increasing it gradually as I play. I need to work out the details of exactly how often I'm going to increase it, but uh, to start off with, I think it's fair to reduce it. Once you see the world that we're going to be in, you'll understand why. Uh, fast walk speed, I have turned on sideways instability with the soil. And this one is a little bananas, but it's also kind of awesome. And so you'll all see what that does. Uh, leaving food spoilage fine, sapling growth speed at five days, because I think it makes sense stuff will grow pretty quickly. Uh, tool durability and tool mining speed at max, and I have decreased the frequency of temporal storms. This is a new thing. I haven't experienced one yet, but I feel like I'm not going to enjoy that, so I want that to be as, as rare as possible. <laughs> Uh, I could turn them off, but I do also want to see what happens. And I've increased copper and tin frequency uh, by quite a bit. Uh, so this is a jungle challenge. Let's apply that. Welcome to the jungle is the name of the world. Uh, before I jump in, because I'm going to need to get moving right away, and I don't want to get distracted, I've written down some notes. So the rules for this challenge. By the way, if you're confused about what I'm talking about with these whole challenges, go back. I have did a uh, desert challenge and a winter challenge. Uh, already. So there's two other series you can check out on my channel if you're not sure what's going on. Um, or you can just start with this one. You don't need to see the previous ones. So the rules of this challenge are, one, no map. No map, no mini map. Two, no coordinates. Yeah, that's right. No way to orient myself whatsoever other than the sun and my own sense of direction. Um, I must live in the jungle. Unfortunately, I have not been able to generate a map that is completely jungle, just the way that the world generation works. There's always going to be areas with no trees, um, but I have to have my base in the jungle where I can get lost, otherwise it's no fun. Also, I have to start in the jungle, so if it turns out that I load up the world and I'm standing in the middle of a big grassy field, I am going to restart the world and make a new one until I get one where I am actually in the jungle. Um, again, otherwise it's no fun. So finally, uh, those are all the rules, and my goal is to make a set of iron armor, any kind of iron armor. Uh, so that's going to require me to go through the different types of metals, eventually find iron, and then get enough iron, and go through the process of making armor. I have not made any armor yet, so this is going to be interesting. Um, let's create a world, we'll jump in, I'll let it uh, generate, and uh, this is going to be exciting. Aha! Success! At last! Oh my goodness, this is like my fourth try, you guys. <laughs> Took me a while, and I'll tell you what, um, I do wish... I'm standing right on top of some cover. Uh, I do wish... Oh, nice. This is nice. Uh, I do wish that when you were creating a new world, that you could, uh... There's a way to copy a world... Copy, copy a world seed. So you can create a new world with the same seed and a site. Is this hard enough to make tools with? It is! Sweet. Okay. Oh, goodness. Um, uh, but there's no way to copy all the rest of the settings. So if you're trying to get a specific type of map like I was just doing right now, uh, you just have to put in the settings every single time. It gets a little tedious after a while. So 
I don't know how difficult that would be to add in, but it would be great if there was an option to- Oh, check this out, folks. Ah! That's a cool new thing we have now. Um, it would be... See? This is why I had notes before. I get distracted so easily. Um, it would be nice to be able to create new worlds of the same settings without having to manually enter them every time. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. Just putting that out there. Uh, we need an axe. I really love this new feature with the flint. It's great. It saves a lot of time and a lot of clicking. My poor wrist. My poor wrist, you guys. Alright, so we got basically all the tools we need for now, I think. Um, I need some more branches. And then we gotta figure out... Alright, I gotta start immediately figuring out ways to keep my bearings. That's gonna be important. So I think maybe the first thing I'll do... Cut down a tree. Cut down a tree. And then we'll, we'll put up some sort of signal um, as to where this kind of spawn area is. And just try to... I mean, generally, I've gotten... As I said, I have been practicing this uh, sort of challenge off of my own. And I have found that you get used to not having a map really fast, and I just kind of keep my sense of direction pretty well, for the most part. However, it can also be astonishingly easy whoops, to, uh, to lose your bearings. Alright, so let's get the rest of these. I think that's all I need for tools for now. Um, I could use to find some... Is it papyrus? I see water that way, which has got to have some in it, uh, that I can use for... It's basically reeds, so I can use that for making some baskets. And we've got just kind of dense forest this way, right? So yeah, let's go down towards... That, uh... Thing is, this is pretty steep. I might have trouble finding my way back up here. Well, we'll see. Oh, no I won't, because it's next to this. Actually, will I be able to see that from the bottom? I'm so afraid of falling down and hurting myself. Alright, so up there, that's where spawn is. Not that I need to stay by spawn, really. But also, it's useful to know uh, if I die, <laughs> which way I'm gonna need to go to get back to wherever my base winds up being, so... Alright, it was this way. Oh, goodness. Can I go down and up, down and up, down and up? So, the good news is it's a lot easier to find your way- Oh man, there's no- And we have a grassy area! <laughs> Alright, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a bushy area. Um, but yeah, it'll be a lot easier to kind of keep my bearings- There's a lot more landmarks and stuff than in the snowy world. And there's a lot more materials ready, available. So, uh, I don't have to struggle to find materials quite so much. I mean, we got clay, we got wool, we got everything we need. Um, one of the difficult things is going to be food, because there's almost no plants that will grow. There is, I think, rice can grow. And the only animals that we'll be able to find, occasionally we can find chickens. Ooh, a ruin. Oh, this isn't going to have anything useful, is it? Actually, wait, is this one of the ones with tools inside? Yes! <gasps> Sweet! I could use a shovel, actually, so maybe this will have a shovel inside. Um... There we go. Twizzle. We got... Shovel! Sweet. Shovel. Knife. Tin bronze knife. Okay, I think three is the max that they have. Sweet! We got an upgrade. Okay, so that, that way was spawn. <laughs> I'm very concerned that I'm gonna lose my way really fast, you guys. Yeah. Uh, there's more water this way. I am probably gonna keep trailing off my sentence. I'm sorry, friends. I'm trying to survive now. This is a survival situation. Here we go. We got- Oh, we got cattails, actually. It's amazing. Because these, I can actually move around. I can transplant these. The other ones, the papyrus- Oh. Uh, if you break the roots... Then what you get is a big lot of nothing. There's not very many of these here, though, is the thing. I don't know if I'm gonna get enough to make a basket yet. Oh, the water feels nice and cool, though. 
Um, I was talking about animals. Yes, I was talking about food sources. Uh, so chickens can sometimes spawn. And uh, boars can sometimes spawn. Uh, I did actually go in and slightly increase the temperature, the maximum temperature at which boars can spawn, because for a conversation with some of my people on the Discord about this new challenge, uh, it was pointed out, which I think is right, rightfully so, that uh, boars do quite well in the jungle. There's really no reason why they wouldn't be able to survive. They, they had their maximum temperature set at 28 degrees Celsius, obviously, uh, which is really not that hot, honestly. And I don't see any reason why they can't survive hot. So I just increased it a little bit. I increased it to uh, 32 degrees. So that means they will be able to spawn. And we can get some baskets here. And we got one basket. Look at that. I'm one read short. Is there not one more around? Oh, wait, there is. Oh, yes. Exactly enough for two baskets. Spectacular news. Okay. Got a little bit. Now, my hunger is already going down. Let me see. I did set that only 50%, but... I feel like I see, it might just be a tree trunk. I think I see a trader over there and I see some rice in the distance there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on YouTube, folks. There's always issues with compression and the, the quality not really being able to live up to uh, what it is while I'm playing. But yeah, okay, so I've got a couple of baskets, got a little extra inventory space. What I need is to find some animals for sure, like, as quickly as possible. I am gonna come over and check this rice over here. And also just see if there's anything else around this area. Um, eight out of 10, I'll leave it for now. Don't see any animals around. Oh, as I say that, as I say that. Okay, I don't know, by the way, folks, have you noticed the new tool models? Have you noticed the new, um, come over here. Where is it? <laughs> you notice the new leaves? The fluffy leaves? There we go. There they are. Okay. Now, ideally, it would be better. Yeah, that's right. Go in the water, you fools. Oh. Uh, it would be better to capture these. There's another one somewhere. Or not capture them, but to, to you know. Ooh, more reeds there. To uh, Ira, you need to you need to focus up a little bit. I'm gonna need Ira to focus up a little bit uh, to build to build a feeder thing. And is that what I, is what I was trying to say? <laughs> and lure them in and raise them for meat. Um, but. Right now, I just need instant food. There will be more chickens. More will spawn. And we have to get up to proper copper smithing with an anvil and stuff. Oh, the smithing system is different now as well, folks. And I actually like it. It's, it's a little bit more complicated now, but it's also sort of more immersive, and I am all about that immersion. Okay. I'll get another couple of baskets here. Max out my inventory for the moment. Oh, there's another rooster. Hey, buddy. Gotcha. Get some more meat, and then, um, actually, I'm gonna probably go and try and get some clay. I'm leaving the feathers and bones and stuff for now, basically, because I don't really need them. I probably will never need the feathers, other than potentially I can sometimes sell them to traders. That's a long way off. Right now, my concern is absolute basics of survival in this survival game, in this survival challenge. But uh, because clay is easy to come by, for sure, and wood is easy to come by, I'm gonna be able to make a clay pot and bowl and make up some stew. All right, I should head back towards where I was before I get too turned around. I actually find these kind of bush-filled areas to be more disorienting than the jungle itself. Because it's all much more sort of homogenous, but also uh, 
there's a lot of stuff in your face, so you can't see what you're doing. All right. It was a little bit further this way. Yeah. I think, I think this is the right way. We're pretty close to it. I essentially will prefer to stay near spawn. Went up and down, up and down a couple times. This might be it. Uh, stay near spawn, just again, like in case I die. So I don't have to go out and search for my base again. And again, because one of the rules is I do have to stay in the jungle. Yeah, that's the if I came down before. I can even set up right at spawn, really. No reason I can't. Check this sense of direction out, my friends. Check this sense of direction out. Am I awesome or what? I mean, probably. <laughs> and modest, too. That's another thing that's great about me is my modesty. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to build a fire pit. We'll just build one right here. Fire pit. Fire campfire. However, it's different than usual. See, it's not on fire yet. That has been changed in what I think is a good way. You now need to make a fire starter, or once you have torches, you can use a torch, but for the first time, you have to use a fire starter, and you gotta rub them sticks together and make the fire happen, and it just looks so good. Check it out. Lit. Also, I forgot that I need to get clay first. That's fine. As, um, you may have noticed, I have once again modded the firewood to, uh, to give me a lot more than the vanilla default. Maybe let's head in this way. So I don't have to be going up and down hills like that so much. Let's see if I can find some clay. Because I don't just want to cook the meat. I have the time. I want to uh, cook the meat as a stew. Ooh, there's a room over here. These little wall sections always seem to be the most common ruins to find. Oof. It's getting a little jittery here as well, and I have noticed the frame rate in the new version is a lot lower. I'm not sure what this is going to have, but I don't think it's going to have anything that will benefit me immediately, so I'll come back later. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's rendering all of these fluffy leaves and the wind blowing and all that. It's uh, it's a little hard on the on the old on the old video card there. I'm not finding any clay. I don't want to go veer too far off course here. I want a straight line. I'm hoping I'll spot something before too long. Oh, I'll get another valley over here. So I'm kind of up on top of a sort of a big plateau, it seems. We'll go around the edge a little bit. This might be a mistake, but I'll find my way back. There's copper all over the place. That's good. There we go. Clay. And I haven't made a shovel yet. So, I need some rocks. There's a rock. And I need another rock. Oh, flint. Perfect. Boom. We need a shovel. We don't technically need the shovel, but it's a lot easier with one, right? There we go. And I need a stick. Right there. Stick. Shovel done. Doing good so far, my friends. Doing very well indeed. Oh, you see what I'm talking about? I'm not on a server. It's not it's not server lag. That's the game. There's visual lag in the game. After it breaks, after it breaks, uh, then it shows it breaking. Uh, this has been happening consistently with this version of the game. Again, I think it's just. All of those leaves in the jungle. Really, really taking a toll on the old video card. I have a pretty good video card now. All right, let's head back. Gonna be... Oh, hello. Came right past you. I've got a trader here. Again, not very useful at the moment. Hello. Guild, how are you doing? You're a food supplier. Cool, well, I can sell stuff to you eventually, and I might come and purchase honeycomb or something. One thing that's going to be an issue in this world is I don't think I will be able to find bees. I think bees require a much drier climate. We're not going to be able to, to find that here. So, 
what I'm going to have to do if I want to make lanterns is I'm going to have to uh, trade for beeswax, which is doable. The food seller sometimes sells beeswax. There it is. I'm telling you guys again. Check out my sense of direction. It's not as hard as you might expect. Let's make a quick clay pot here. And then we'll cook the clay pot, and then we'll use the clay pot to cook the chicken. There we go. Uh, then I'm going to be all set. I might actually increase the hunger speed each game day, is what I was thinking of doing. So, like... Uh, maybe each game day I'll increase it by about 5% until I get up to about 75% and see how that goes. I don't want to turn it up too, too high until I'm very well established because otherwise I, I may, I, I don't want to spend all of my time having to hunt chickens. I'd like to be able to focus on other stuff too. So let that go. Uh, and I've got enough for two servings of some poultry stew, which is awesome. Let's make a bowl as well. Good stuff. This is just relaxing. I like it a lot. Uh, while I'm doing this, by the way, friends, um, I mentioned this at the end of my previous episode, which is the last episode of the Winter Wonderland Challenge. I have got a server up and running, um, provided, hosted by one of my very, very generous, kind and awesome patrons, Yasmin. And um, all patrons at $5 and up, welcome to, to come on, jump on that server and play with us. We're having a really great time. It is on the, the 1.12 version, which is good. And I would love to play with you. I'm, I'm definitely actively playing on there with a bunch of my awesome patrons. And they're very good and very awesome people. And we're having a lovely time. Some of them are really amazing builders. And I love playing with people who are really amazing builders. Because it's like, I'm not a terrible builder, but I'm definitely not an amazing builder, you know? Maybe someday. But definitely not, not yet. You know what I've, it's occurring to me now is I did not build this fire pit underneath a little roof and we do have weather in this version We've got weather and we need to prepare for rain in the rainforest who would have thought right oh look at this look at this ah i love it it's so beautiful there's no reason for that but it's gorgeous and i love it thank you very much developers for making that a thing it makes me happy come on come on come on Probably should have made the stew first and then cooked it. Well, I wouldn't have been able to eat the stew anyway, would I? It's fine. I'm doing okay. I actually really lucked out finding those chickens right away. Uh, they're not that common. So don't get too excited that there's just chickens everywhere. I will have to go out and search for more before too long. But these these two bowls of stew are going to help me out for probably the next in-game day or two. I'll be able to, you know, not starve. I should probably make a... Well... First of all, I should probably make a couple more baskets. Duh, right? Almost done already. Awesome. I don't need that one. Um, oh, that's right. I got that wood so that I can make a little roof. Or my cooking area here. It's an important thing to be able to do. Yes! We got stew. I already put the bowl down. Let's pick that up. Um, now, one thing, this being one of the few advantages of the previous game world was that in the frozen biome, I was basically living inside a freezer, and so food lasted for ages once you put it out in the world. That is not going to be the case in this world. Because, you know, um, it's hot. Stuff spoils faster when it's hot, so I am going to want to carry my food in my pockets as much as possible. It'll last a lot longer that way rather than putting it in the world. And eventually I will, of course, make a, a cellar, which will help a lot. Um, but my friends, it's I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm absolutely amazed by this fact that I'm about to share with you all. It's like the end of the episode. And it's beautiful. The sun is setting. Uh, we haven't got to see any rain yet. It's actually kind of surprising. Usually the rainforest, you get rain just about every day. But I'm sure it will come soon enough. Um, I'm going to settle in here by the fire. 
and think about how I'm going to spend the next episode's worth of stuff. But for now, it's uh, over here. It's hot. I'm wearing the minimal amount of clothes. Just my shredded, <laughs> tattered trousers. Um, that's going to be it for this episode already. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Living in a jungle is going to be great fun. I think I'm going to be a lot happier here than I... Oh. <laughs> I'll get this fire going in a minute. I think I'll be a lot happier here than I was in the, the frozen tundra. Um, so, yeah. I'll, I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye. Bye.